<laughs> Spirit Halloween, the brand new Halloween superstore with over 10,000 square feet of costumes, accessories, and decorations. Eau Claire's largest Halloween store. Kids' costumes, adult costumes, wigs, hats, and masks, accessories and makeup, decorations, and so much more. If it's Halloween, we have it. So come in and check out our huge selection. Spirit Halloween, located on Hamilton Avenue, across from Cops. Ooh, it's that time of year again! The time when the dead come back to life is empty. Hollow shells return to the realm of the living, inhabited by spirits, if you will. <laughs> Spirit Halloween is a, well, a little bit of a running gag, but also a legitimate business that can be seen all over, but the exact location of which varies wildly depending on what year we're talking about because spirit is friggin weird but for their particular niche they make total sense spirit halloween is a specialty store focusing on the, the, the halloween i i don't know what you expected costumes horror apparel all sorts of different spooky nonsense is all over the place when it comes to spirit, just like they are, because they are a pop-up storefront, which is highly unusual. It is a thing, and it has been seen in multiple avenues, but it's not super common. A pop-up storefront is, as the name suggests, a storefront that just kind of pops up wherever and goes away relatively quickly, only to pop up somewhere else. And it generally is seen for seasonal stores. The type of businesses that only do a lot of business during a certain time of the year. Naturally, Spirit Halloween only stands to make a significant amount of profit during Halloween. And regardless of what your edgy teen daughter says about how it's not just a phase and how Halloween can last all year, the reality is most people don't buy Halloween stuff all year round. But they do buy it during October. Hence, Spirit Halloween's business model. And yes, I know, some people do like to buy spooky stuff all year round, but they're just a bunch of posers. Oh, your favorite holiday is spooky time, huh? That's not edgy at all. Even the most basic individual's favorite holiday is Halloween because they can play pretend and stuff. Listen, real edgelords stay edgy all the time, and our favorite holidays are stuff no one thinks of, like Arbor Day. You know nothing of edge factor, poser! Anyway, back to business. Spirit Halloween got its start back in 1983 at the Castro Valley Mall in, well, Castro Valley, California. It was the brainchild of a man named Joe Marver. Marver already had some success as he ran his own clothing store named, well, Spirit Women's Discount Apparel. He noticed that people liked Halloween. A lot of women, in fact, liked Halloween even back then because they like dressing up and having an excuse to do it in a spooky style. He started including Halloween stuff in his own clothing shop and realized it was selling, so he decided to create a pop-up that sold only that. He had a lot of naysayers since pop-ups were risky and didn't always work, but then he did $100,000 in the span of a month with just one location. Yeah, yeah, it did really well. Marva realized there was money to be made with this particular business model, and the following year, he started popping up in different spots, usually closing within a month or two. But how do these pop-ups even work? And why does Spirit seemingly always inhabit the dead and dying locations? Places where there was once another store, Spirit often moves in. What's the deal there? Well, Spirit Halloween generally doesn't own any locations at all. They don't own any property. And that's not entirely unusual, as a lot of store chains will lease or rent a spot. But Spirit specializes in it, and in their case, what they do is that their leases are only for a few months, not years. Because they only want the storefront to be there for the window of time where Halloween is actually, well, a thing. Like, like right now, it's, it's, as I'm recording this, it's October 17th. By the time most of you see this, it'll be October 25th, right before Halloween. The point is, 
Uh, there's probably a Spirit Halloween somewhere near you as I speak, but it won't be there within about, I'd say, three, maybe four weeks from now. Because there's no reason to have it there during the off-season. Spirit makes all their money during spooky time. And at no other time. Now, granted, in the modern day, they have invested in online. Meaning, you can still buy stuff from them year-round. You just can't do it in a physical store. They only invest in the physical during the times when they know it's going to make money. And it's actually a very safe business model for them. Not only are they almost always guaranteed to make money because they're open during the exact time frame where they would be doing that, but also they don't have to worry about covering the overhead year-round. They only have to pay for it during the times where they're making enough money to pay for it. Unlike a permanent fixture, a permanent retail outlet that has to stay there all year round and is always worried about making money all year round, Spirit doesn't have to think about that. They only exist during the peak time for profitability and vanish into the darkness during the other times only to rise again under the light of the full moon when it's time to get spooky. Marver would pioneer the business model right up until 1999. By then, they had 60 seasonal locations across the United States, but then he sold the company to Spencer Gifts, who also specialized in the edgy side of things, though a bit more adult-oriented, where his spirit is for everybody. Spencer Gifts management pretty much carried spirit forward the exact same way that they always had, popping up in various locations and vanishing into the ether, though they did move their flagship location, which isn't open year-round, but is considered their flagship store. This new flagship location is located in Egg Harbor Township, New Jersey, and is a... <laughs> uh, sorry, you can actually kind of tell looking at it. It's a former Circuit City. Oh, really laying into the standing on the graves of the dead storefronts, aren't you? Even Circuit City's old plug door kind of looks like a gravestone now, doesn't it? Magnificent. And likely because of their particular seasonal issue, they were less affected by the pandemic restrictions. They actually opened stores during the pandemic, believe it or not, only to close them again, but that's like their whole thing. It's estimated that they make about, oh, you know, eight and a half billion dollars yearly, like absolute maniacs, because people like Halloween and people go to Spirit because they do Halloween pretty much better than anybody else. It's exactly what they do. That's their whole point. So, of course, people are going to go there when they can. Plus, because the physical stores are so limited, only appearing during peak times, there's this psychological effect where, like, well, I'm here now, and they're not going to be here in a few weeks. I better get this now, regardless of the price. Granted, that's kind of silly because, like I said, you can go online. But even then, you're still buying it from Spirit either way. They don't even care. I think the cool thing about Spirit Halloween is how they inject a lot of creativity and even backstory into some of the things they offer particularly their animatronics. Now, the quality of their animatronics varies quite a bit. It depends who you ask and which animatronic we're talking about. But some of them are genuinely good. And the thing about them is that they seemingly almost always have some kind of backstory surrounding the animatronic, particularly the non-licensed ones. The licensed ones obviously always have a backstory, but the non-licensed ones that they make on their own have their own backstory that, that Spirit writes for them, which is actually really cool. That little bit of extra effort, you know, it's not just a random animatronic with no thought put into it. No, 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 this guy, he has a story. A spooky story for spooky time. And, you know, Halloween goers like that kind of stuff. But do they only do Halloween? Is that all they're good for? Are they only good for spook time? Well, multiple times they have attempted to go into the most profitable holiday, which is not, in fact, Halloween. I'm, of course, talking about Christmas! Spirit Christmas was toyed with by Marver all the way back in 1990. And it made sense because not only was Christmas also profitable, but it was only a couple months out from Halloween, so all he had to do was get a longer lease on the property. But it just didn't do as well as Spirit Halloween for whatever reasons. Under Spencer Gifts ownership, they tried to do it again between 2005 and 2006, and that also didn't work. And they're gonna try it again this year. Yep, 2024. They have 10 locations set to open, 
to revive the concept for the third time. I'm not sure whether Christmas is really going to work out for them. I think the problem is that unlike Halloween, which does get some traction in big box stores, it's not nearly as prevalent as Christmas. The big box stores invest heavily in Christmas stuff just all over the place, starting as early as now. There's Christmas stuff there now, even though Halloween hasn't even happened. Because of that, as a market, Christmas is much more oversaturated, so a specialty store about that is a bit harder to break into, I feel. Whereas with Halloween, yes, the big box chains do do Halloween, but not as good as Spirit Halloween. Where everyone kind of has Christmas nailed down, to be honest. But hey, maybe they can get it to work. I I'd like to see it. It'd be interesting. It'd be cool. But they've still got the Halloween stuff going on regardless. They can afford to experiment. But are they such a perfect company? Don't they have some CONTROVERSIES? Well, okay, it, it, honestly, if you're asking my opinion, a lot of the controversies surrounding Spirit are, in a word, stupid. They've been criticized for high prices, which is just adorable because, A, they offer a whole bunch of coupons, which you can use, and B, if you don't want to pay that much, then don't shop there. Oh. Oh, I didn't know I could do- You mean I don't have to spend the money? On to Halloween? Oh no, as it turns out, the vast majority of Spirit Halloween's offerings are in fact a very optional thing. They're not in food, they're not in medicine, nothing they sell is a thing that you need. You just want it. Another complaint is about those animatronics, as a few of their manufacturers are a little bit worse than others, but at the same time, Spirit Halloween's customer service is known to be pretty good. And as long as you have proof of purchase, they'll gladly send you replacement components for any of your broken animatronics, which is pretty solid of them. So they are handling that pretty well. Oh yes, and the costumes. Specifically, the culture costumes. Twitter said it was offensive, you guys. You're hurting people's feelings. How dare you? And I know how offensive it is all over the place, definitely. Because I, as a suburban white female, know exactly what it means to be oppressed. Spirit got into some trouble over the whole cultural thing, mostly due to the Native American costumes. And to be fair, some of the complainants were actual Native Americans who felt it was offensive for a white person to dress up as them in a comical way. And to a degree, I can meet them in the middle on that. I, 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 I can understand the issue here. I'm not sure whether I'd call it outright racism because I don't think it's coming from a place of hate. I have a hard time believing that Spirit Halloween was looking to offend anybody because a lot of those kind of costumes go back decades. They were just kind of going with a cultural norm. And if the Native American community doesn't like it, then who am I to argue? But uh, regardless, they got through it. They're still around and you can still go to them as I speak and purchase all your Halloween spooky, spooky goodies for the sake of horror. 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 And with that, a special thank you goes out to all my underwater train finders, some dude 267, Benjamin Owens, Anzac A1, Arthur Roy, Jack Carson's World Videos, Lord Off 444, Iserfer 1405, Charles Kwiatkowski, Matt Weaver, Tom Red Lion, NS Productions 8104, Wheeljack 8401, Rescues Greyhounds, The Baxter, Caleb Crosswhite, Josh Johnson, Kinder Brainwaters, Prez Drenton, Master of None, Travis Zelinski, JBL Explorers, Tommy Rossini, Ben McCola, Panzer Kitsune 131-232, Mark Holding, Mr. Terrible, Hayden DeGrow, Bad Train, Puns are Best, Kurt Forkham, Harry, Drew Debris, George Kenny, Kevin Wood, Hendrick Motorsports Fan 5, Hannah Bird, Duraushi, A Person 723, William Nemo, Dr. Racia 78, Shimasu, Metal for Life Guy, Andrew Bowen, Crimson Rose, Ryan Wehofer, Zintec M, Boss K, Orange Glass, Andy, The Conceptual List, Ohio Trucker 1, Windy City Rails, John Videola, AET Museum, Extra Special J, DFL Church, Murder Drones Doll, Bob Condurk, Your Mom Liked It, Jared Brussel, Caden Alvey, Levi Anderson, Dara Williams, Liam Wright, DE Ultra, Mr. Sleepy, NJ1969, Acoletti, Jonathan Coco, John, Connor Hahn, and of course, my dad. Till next time, this is Darkness, the Midwell of Fun, farewell.